Watch. Has anyone ever seen a mermaid? In cartoons, maybe. Oh, Nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, sir, I'm not so sure. About what? Seeing a mermaid. No way. Are you kidding? What's your name? Cindy. Cindy? And you say you've seen a mermaid? Well, my brother Jonathan and I, we thought we did. Well, maybe in his dreams. There's no such thing as mermaid. Oh, there's no such thing as a mermaid, is there? Well, what about a merman? Oh, oh yes. Really? You find that amazing? Let me tell you another amazing story about the sea. Come on. Some of the most fantastic stories about the sea are told in small, isolated fishing villages along the coast where the imagination and superstitions run wild. And all it takes mm -hmm. is one strange occurrence. Mm -hmm. And lives can turn upside down. So it was in the little village of Larry Cove one summer when Cindy Copeland ran down to the beach to welcome her father from a fishing trip. This thing really is a merman. There's got to be more of them out there. She's right, Dad. We'll have to mount a proper merman expedition. What is that disgusting thing doing in here? Really, Bob, I've warned you, it's bad luck. Hello, Auntie. It's not got any germs. Dad sent it to the specialist. It's been scientifically preserved. Preserved? And how much did that cost? Bad enough that you should keep a mutant fish in the first place without spending good money on it. The merman's front page knows, Mrs. Um... You're new around here, aren't you? Oh, this is Sheila Powers from the Weekly Star. This is my sister, Moya. Dad's merman's gonna be in the papers. Everybody's talking about it. Oh, are they? Well, they do better to mind their own business. I'll be in the kitchen if you want me. Bark's worse than her bite. <laughs> Are you going to take that picture? I certainly am. Wait till I get Fizz and Jet. Who are they? It's animals. He's got a proper zoo. Hamster, the rabbit. Tortoise, white rat. Fish. Meet Jet. Meet Fizz. <laughs> well, we'd better get you all on camera then. OK. Tell me if you find any more mermen, won't you? Sure will. That's what it is. Where it's only a bit of fun. And she's an outsider. That's exactly the kind of prejudice people show to Mary. Oh, is it? 
Well, while we're on the subject of Mary, is that what you want? People raking up the past? Because if you do, you're going the right way about it. How? When was the last time this family got into the papers? All right, all right. We've got enough trouble without you going on. How am I going to pay all these? Well, it's your own fault. You spend too much time gazing out to sea instead of earning a living. I thought at least when we put up photographs for you, you might be getter. It's high time you put the past behind you, Bob Copeland, and started looking to the future. Are you listening to me? The children will be going to college before you know what's what. And then what do you do? Mermaids won't pay for that, will they? they look like, we might recognize a tail or an arm. Washed up after a storm. Do you have to be so gruesome? We need to prove they're real. What else is there? Mermaid coins. What are they? Tiny little shells, like this. But that's just a shell. No, it's not. It's a coin. All right. So what do mer people buy with these coins, then? They use as dowries for mermaid princesses. To think. Of all the people in the world, our dad is the one who found the earth. Here you go. Not crab again. I'm sorry, it's all your dad brought back. Apart from that merman. Fishing's finished around here. Things are getting serious, kids. I, I can't afford to pay the bills. Last time there weren't any fish, you worked at Uncle Jimmy's boatyard. Can't you go back, Andy? Nobody wants new boats, Jonathan. No fish, no fishing boats. It's bad for everybody. I could ask Mrs. Scrot if she could give me a holiday job in the store. You need a more drastic solution than that. Oh, it's a nice one of Cindy. Nice to be on the front page. I think it's great. That disgusting thing. Uncle Jim's pleased. Once they've all seen the merman, they all want to go out and catch for themselves. So suddenly everybody wants their boats repaired. Why don't you take people out, Dad? You're the one who found it. We'd earn a fortune. Jim could put some extra seating on the Mary Jean. No. I've got another idea. Why don't we open a guest house? A guest house? What? You mean have strangers staying with us? Oh, plenty of room in this old place. We can advertise. See the famous merman. Stay at the mermaid's rest. They'd come in droves. It isn't a mermaid. It's a merman. Well, who do the cooking and the cleaning? Oh, no. Better than taking tourists for joy rides. It'd be a proper business. We'd never get to use the bathroom. We wouldn't be able to see what we wanted on TV. Could be the answer to our prayers. I'll show you. They're not ready yet. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, that was my son, Jonathan. <laughs> the scones are burning. Why did you leave them? I can't be too sick spots now, can I? Roll them out and I'll start a new batch. It isn't right. She's not being kind to your father, and you'll live to regret bringing that thing into his home. Moya, it's about Jim. It's been an accident. The winch swung free. It smashed his shoulder. Poor Uncle Jim. Blame that merman. I do. I blame that merman. Even Cindy had come to hate the merman. 
And Moya was right. It had brought nothing but trouble on their heads. But there was worse to come. You can't keep on like this, Bob. It's high time you found yourself another wife. Why? You need help running the house. We manage. Only because I keep coming to your rescue. And I can't keep on now that Jim's laid up. What about when the kids go back to school? Holidays won't last forever. I'll never marry again. What else can you do? You can't afford a housekeeper. I'll never be another woman like Mary. How do you know? You haven't looked. I wouldn't know where to start. Advertise. Advertise? I'm not that desperate. Yes, you are. Anyway, Bob, you're lonely. You need companionship. What would I say? Hang on a minute. I'll just get some paper and a... Now, what should we write? Widowed man seeks companion. No, Bob. Get to the point. Widowed man seeks wife. Sorry, I should have told you. Anybody could turn up, even Mrs. Grote. Imagine her as our stepmother. Don't worry, I'd never marry Mrs. Grote. Why do you want to get married at all? I can look after you. I know, love, but I... I need the companionship. You've got me. You won't always be here, will you? What do you mean? Well, one day you'll have a husband of your own. No, I won't. Anyway, we need help running the boarding house. Admit it, Cindy, you run off your feet. Wow, there's millions of letters. Jack thinks she's been an avalanche. They're all in answer to the advert. Which one of you picked Jack? Dracula? I don't want a stepmother. Cindy! Cindy! Distressed and angry, Cindy ran off to the hills to be alone. She met the anchoress, the holy woman of Blairy Hills. invited confidences. And soon Cynthia told her all the troubles. My dad always says I talk too much. But I needed to tell someone. My aunt was right. That merman's bad luck. The merman belongs back in the sea. But you can't blame him for not having a mother. I'm going to have a horrible stepmother. And that's his fault. I know a story of someone who disappeared. She lived in a fishing village just like yours. Of course, that was a long time ago. She was very young when she first came to the village, and many resented her because she was so beautiful and kind. Her eyes were the color of the sea, and the animals loved her. It's my dad, it's my dad. One of the fishermen, a young man, fell in love with her. Is that my mom? Not caring what others thought, 
the young people decided to marry. And when their first child was born, and they moved into the house of their dreams, they thought they were in paradise. Is that me? <laughs> My house, too. Sometime later, a second child, a baby boy, was born, and they thought that nothing could mar their happiness. That must be Jonathan. It is. There's lots of little fizzes. And there's Jack. Yes, it's definitely Jonathan. Cindy. But as the anchoress continued telling her story, Cindy realized it wasn't Jonathan at all. But it can't be Jonathan. I'm the wrong age. Unable to sever her ties with the past, dark forces were unleashed beyond their control. And their happiness was shattered forever. villagers had their revenge. Rumors spread that the mother herself had made away with the child. You're not wanted here, Mary Copeland! Where's that baby? What have you done with that baby? But though there was no shortage of accusers, nothing was ever proved. After a while, the young woman had another child, another boy. But she couldn't forget the child she had lost and kept on looking for him. making all of this up. I am an anchoress, Cindy. I have taken the vow of truth, honor, and courage. I see things. Past. Future. Even what goes on in people's hearts. I am Judith, the holy woman of the Blarry Hills. You think I shouldn't mind Dad marrying you? don't you? Better that than to condemn him to a loveless life. Loveless? But he isn't. He's got me. And I don't want a stepmother. Oh, no. New booking? Free, and, um, Jennifer Schilling has accepted our invitation. Jennifer Schilling? Who's she? One of Dad's candidate wives. Don't be so rude. She's coming to look us over. Look us over? She sounds very nice. Fun-loving, she says. In that case, she's bound to be horrible. End of the week. Better get things in shape, Cindy. One, 
a face. I'm sorry. It's not that I want to condemn Dad to a loveless life or anything. What? It's going to be awful. Loveless life? Who said that? The Anchoress. What Anchoress? The Anchoress in the Blarry Hills. She's sort of a holy hermit or something. She sees things. What rubbish. She knows everything. She told me about Dad being lonely and how we should return the merman to the sea. She even told me about Mom and the baby that was lost. What? You're making this up. I am not. She told me that Jonathan and I had a baby brother and he disappeared. I never want to hear you mention that again. What? Never. Do you hear me? Gossiping like that? What have your father heard? Oh, no, no, no. This is too much. Now look what you've done. Determined to find the truth, Cindy went on a fact-finding mission. Reverend John, do you know anything about my mother? The pastor refused to be drawn. He said he could not remember. Shale, uh -huh. can you tell me anything about my mother? No, no dear, not now. Much too busy. Mrs. Groats! Mrs. Groat and Mrs. Shale were also unwilling conspiracy of silence continued. Cindy decided to seek out the anchoress again. It's up here. Where? But it was here. It was. I told you, you dreamed the whole thing. But I didn't. I'm going home. Come on, Cindy. Jonathan, come here. What is it now? Come look at this. Dedicated to the Anchoress of Larry Hills and gratitude for her many miracles. 1776? You said you talked to her? I did. Kind of. She died more than 200 years ago. She told me her name was Judith. Far from fun loving. Jennifer Schilling turned out to be a cold, demanding woman. I then checked them for cleanliness and found them wanting. She made the children tidy their rooms and banished the animals to the garden. Oh, we don't want that on the table. Thank you. Really, Bob, you'll have to set better culinary standards than this if you want to attract a good class of clientele. What scullery standards? Uh, culinary, Jonathan. Mrs. Schilling doesn't like Auntie Moya's cooking. I can't see any custard. That's because there isn't any. But we always have custard. We like custard. Custard is vulgar. I threw it out. Aww. That's enough. If you don't want any pudding, desserts, then you can go to your beds without any. What? Dracula. How dare you? You rude children. Take your dishes and go to your beds now. <laughs> Dad. Better do as Mrs. Schilling tells you. Oh, you spoiled them. Eat up. I'm not hungry. Can't say I blame you. Now, Bob, I've been taking a look at the books. You know, if you were to smarten up your ideas a little bit, you could make a fortune out of this place. All it would take is some initial investment. Suppose you were to sell that boat of yours. Not the Mary Jean. I'll teach you a wee stop. Dracula's grandmother! That night, troubled by the prospect of Mrs. Schilling as a future stepmother, Cindy couldn't sleep.
Was it Judith she had seen in the moonlight? If so, then why had she lured her father to the beach? Was it some kind of trick? Or had Cindy just been dreaming? Table three? Yeah, but you have to wait for the toast. I just burnt it. I was thinking of going out on the Mary Jane today. Try my luck fishing again. You just want to get away from Mrs. No. Schilling. We could go on our merman expedition. No, you couldn't. It's your turn to do the hoovering. Oh, no. I wasn't thinking of looking for merman anyway. Dad, were you out on the beach last night? Me? No, I am. Do you think you can make my scrambled eggs a little less rubbery this morning, Jonathan? Jennifer, um, this is for you. I, uh, I have to go out. What's that terrible smell? Your eggs, Mrs. Schilling. Ah, oh, help! Don't worry, Mrs. Schilling. We'll make some more. It's not my fault. I can't do everything. Where's Auntie Moya? What? Still unsettled by her dream about the anchoress, Cindy was on her way home when she thought she saw Judith again. Once again, Judith had disappeared. Was the anchoress playing games with her? At least Mrs. Schilling had gone. But it wasn't long before the next applicant arrived. Jan Pollock was huge, and her vast appetite kept Aunt Moya very busy. on the last one, I'll say that. Like 
Where'd he go? He disappeared. Just like the Anchoress. No, there he is. It seemed the merman was exercising his baleful influence over them all, even Jonathan's rabbit. But just like the Anchoress, Fizz led them on, only to disappear. Where is he? Why has Fizz brought us up here? There was a fisherman who lived in a fishing village not far from here. He was an ordinary man, like other men, except that when he was young, he met a mermaid, and they both fell madly in love. The mermaid was granted three years by her people to be with the fisherman, after which time she had to return to the sea. The fisherman never forgot how beautiful she was. Each day, he saw her eyes in the deep green of the sea and heard her laughter rippling in the waves. As he grew older, he began to despair of ever seeing his mermaid again. So one day, he set out to look for her. He sailed for seven days and seven nights, and there was no sign of his mermaid. But determined not to return till he had found her, he kept on. Soon he ran out of food. Then he ran out of water. Whether he found his mermaid or the sea claimed him, we shall never know. But what we do know is that the fishermen was never seen again. Cindy realized that the mermaid was the love her father had lost. Wow. Perhaps we'd better tell Dad. No. No, it's only a story. Her heart ached for him. She still didn't want a stepmother, especially none of the candidates who came to the house. The third applicant, Hazel Bouncer. She wanted to change everything from the curtains to the furniture. off for a walk. I want to have a little chat with Hazel here. Good idea. Now, Hazel, about you and Bob. Cindy remembered the story the anchoress had told, the old man and the mermaid. By advertising for a wife, was her father really still seeking his lost love?
Jonathan. Your mother appeared from nowhere. Just came from off the boat, got a job in the canning factory. Wouldn't talk about the past, family, where she came from. Of course, that made people even more suspicious. What do you mean, more suspicious? People are always suspicious of newcomers, Cindy, and Mary was lovely. <laughs> Put a lot of noses out of joint, I can tell you. <laughs> Did you like her? Not at first, no. I was jealous, too. Especially when my big brother fell in love with her. But something happened to change all that. What? Go on, Auntie, tell us. Well, once upon a time, when Jack was still my tortoise... Yours? He must be really old. No. Thanks. <laughs> well, he had an accident. You ever notice that mark on his shell? Yes, the pattern's funny. No, it's not the pattern. His shell got broken. How? One spring morning, wandering around in a daze after his winter sleep, Jack fell down some stone steps all the way to the bottom, and his shell broke right in two. Mary, your mother, glued it together again. That mark there is the join. Poor old Jack. No, not at all. Once your mom mended him, he was right as rain. Of course, I adored her after that. And when she and Bob got married, I was chief bridesmaid. How come there aren't any photographs of mom? I hurt your father too much to look at them, so he put them away. I never knew about that one. I bet he looked at it every day. <laughs> what happened to her, Auntie? Did she just disappear? Yeah, soon after Jonathan was born. He refused to talk about it, and everybody else was glad to forget the matter. Guilty consciences of the way they treated her, I shouldn't wonder. And since that time, no one's been able to console him. Except maybe a new wife? He deserves some happiness, doesn't he? Nothing else. Please, Dad, can you... Later, Sim. But you've got... Later! Judith. She was supposed to perform miracles, so perhaps she can find a companion for Dad.
carry Jim. He's shut now. We went out just before the storm. I can't raise him. It's such a mess. You'll have to do something. Mary Jean won't survive in this. What happened, Auntie Moya? Back now, Jim. See what you can do. Bye. Where's Dad? Look at you. Stuck to the skin. Where's Dad, Auntie Moya? Auntie Moya! Your Dad went out in the Mary Jean. He hasn't come back. Oh, no. She didn't think I meant that, did she? Judith! Cindy! Come back! Jonathan! Cindy! Copeland had still not returned two days later, the villagers gathered to pray for his soul. For they thought now there was no hope for his return. has read your father's ad. Oh? Who? Single mother, baby. Looking for a meal ticket, if you ask me. I'll to put her off. Mermaid coins, look! Mermaid coins. Jonathan, you know what this means. Nothing. It means nothing at all. No, Aunt, you got it all wrong. Don't you see? Dad isn't dead at all. Cindy, he's been gone a week. This is a mermaid's dowry, Auntie. It's like you said. It's no good fooling yourself. He isn't coming back. Auntie, I want you to write to that woman and ask her to come. That mermaid, take it up to the bottom. And if you don't, I will. You're your father's daughter, Cindy Copeland. A dreamer. And obstinate as the day is long. You won't do it, though. You will ask her to come. Cindy and Jonathan waited impatiently for the reply they knew would come. Thank you.
when it did... She's coming to see us. She's coming to see us. If the bride was coming, surely the groom could not be far from home. Farther than I've ever been before. What happened to you? You look different somehow. I'm happy, love. That's all. I've had the best catch in ages. Where did you go? Well, when I was returning the merman at Blarry Point, a storm blew. It blew me right out to sea. It blew for three days until I lost all my bearings. And when finally the sun came out, I found myself in the middle of a whole new fishing ground. And I just couldn't believe my luck. Dad, listen. This came today. Read it. Go on. Read it. What now? Yes. Go on, Dad. It's from another applicant. Why, so it is. Her name's Maris. Well, she sounds nice. Says she's coming the end of the week. Having buried the past, Cindy's father was now ready for the future. <laughs> Cindy. Hello. And you must be Jonathan. How are Jack and Fizz? How did you... <laughs> then Cindy knew for sure that this was her real mother and her brother returned from the sea. The anchoress had worked her miracle after all. And you are... Moya? Welcome to Blairy Cove. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he sweet? <laughs> and what had brought about this extraordinary happening in the humdrum fishing village of Blarry Cove? Was it superstition? We may never know. Superstition is a product of fear and expects the unpleasant events it dreads most. But if we love enough, if we look on the world through loving eyes, we see things differently. Then it becomes a place of magic in which anything can happen, and sometimes does.
Close your eyes.